Hi guys, and welcome back to Interact's Grow Podcast, where we talk to you about all things marketing and help you actually grow your business. I'm your host, Jasmine Solana, and with me again this week, Damaris and Jackie. Thank you guys for joining me as always. We're still missing Jessie. She's still out in Hungary, but if you know Interact, you know we love to travel and be around the world. So today what we're going to talk about is we're still diving deep into quizzes a little bit um we're kind of discovering all these topics we want to talk about and this is a big question it kind of relates to so when i was thinking of this topic i was like actually this relates a little bit to like how do i know my quiz is working or what was it is how do i when do i actually see results from my quiz that episode we did a few weeks ago Um, So today we're going to talk more about conversion rates to look out for in your quiz. Um, More specifically, probably your entire funnel because everything plays its own part in how successful your quiz campaign is. Um, Jackie, I know you said you had a perfect example for this, so I'm going to pass it off to you. Do you want to jump right in? Yeah, I mean, the example I was thinking of, I got excited about this episode talking about conversions because we get asked all the time, are my conversions good? What are these analytics telling me? And one thing that I've been able to dive into with a lot of customers, and this is where a lot of people will fall off of your quiz, believe it or not, is on the actual opt-in form. So if you're on the light plan, you'll if you're on any interact paid plan, you'll be able to see the funnel of your quiz analytics. So how many people click to start the quiz? How many people um, completed the quiz, or sorry, how many people viewed the quiz, how many people clicked to start it, how many people completed it, so they got to a quiz result page, and then of the people who completed it, how many subscribed. So your opt-in form can be optional or required, so completions and leads can be different. And so if you are on the growth plan, you can actually see how many people left on every uh, a single question within your quiz. And so what we've been doing with a lot of customers is is you look at the number of people who answered your last quiz question. And I guess, let me just say this first. This is for the people who, when you're looking at that overview funnel of views to starts to completions, you're looking pretty good, but maybe the leads aren't coming through. Um, Or that's like where they get to the completions is where they fall off. They don't want to see the result. So you you look at the number of people who answered your last quiz question And then you look at the number of people who completed the quiz, meaning they got to a quiz result. So Mm. if you do have your opt-in form required, completions and leads will be the same. But if it's an optional opt-in form, leads and completions will be very different. And so this specific stat that's not like jumping out to you when you look at your Interact Analytics, if you you subtract the number of people who answered the last question, but and then completed the quiz, you'll see how many people left on the opt-in form. And the really interesting thing, like when I first started, I was like, something's wrong here. These numbers are not making sense because even if you have an optional opt-in form, meaning you don't have to subscribe to see the quiz result, you might be amazed at how many people are still leaving on the quiz result page. Maybe it's just because they're seeing a form and they're like, ah, form, nope, I'm not giving you my information. Or maybe this happens a lot. You're using the generic opt-in form text of we'll send you fun and infrequent updates. People are not looking for that, so they don't want to subscribe. So that's my favorite analytic that you can figure out from the quiz. If you're seeing your funnel and things are looking pretty good, check how many people you're losing on the opt-in form. And that's a really great way to optimize your quiz and get more people onto your list. I love that one. I actually have never heard of that. We have like our top conversion rate, which is, you know, how many people start your quiz to how many people opt in to your email list, which is a good like kind of starting rate to look at without having to do too much, you know, calculations or or looking too deep into it. But I never really knew how to figure out, okay, how many people actually get to the results page? How many people Mm -hmm. see that result? Because a lot of times, what your quiz is doing is it's leading people to like that next call to action. Um, and if they don't see the result, you don't even know if they're actually seeing it. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing too is how many times will people go in and try to update the quiz or make a new quiz or do all of this work on the quiz itself when it's really just, hey, your opt in form could be made optional or could be set to required or you could change the copy on it. 
regardless of the the analytic that you're looking at, I would suggest when you see where there are gaps, right? So like if a bunch of people are viewing the quiz, but not a lot of people are starting it, then just focus on the title. Just focus on, you know, where you're marketing it, how you're marketing it, how you talk about the quiz, and just make one change at a time. Because if you go in and redo the whole quiz and start from scratch or make all these changes at once, you're not going to know what's moved the needle enough to get more people into the quiz, completing the quiz, so that you can do more of that in your in your efforts. So slow and steady changes so that you can optimize this quiz over time is my mantra that's not my mantra at all, that's <laughs> motto <laughs> yeah and another thing to note on the opt-in form that i've noticed that has affected conversion rates is either it's too wordy like you're overwhelming the quiz takers and the amount of information you're trying to add on the description box um or it's like J Jackie was saying, it's too generic. Like they're not really finding any value in actually subscribing to, to the quiz. And so you just have to be really intentional with what you're saying um, to really relay and sort of connect with your audience because that's the reason they started taking the quiz in the first place, right? Like they are interested in what you're seeing, what they're seeing, what they're offering, what you're offering. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. That that makes me think of wanting to do like a, an episode specific to the opt-in form because I don't want to dive too much and veer off of like the topic, but yeah. there is a difference between, you know, getting someone to take your quiz, but getting someone to subscribe to your email list because there could be that moment where they're like, oh, I thought like, I didn't know that this is what was going to happen and now I'm not really into it which you don't always want those people on your email list anyway, but it doesn't hurt to try tweaking your language or, or tweaking the call to action um, and letting them know what they're going to receive once they opt in. So that way, like you can get a better conversion rate right there. Yep. 100%. So one that I wanted to call out i don't know exactly how you would calculate this but what comes to mind is from the people that opt in to your email list from your quiz how many people open that first email that you actually send out because that is the one that they're going to be most likely to open um since you're super fresh in their mind they just took your quiz they're probably super excited you did you know kind of I guess like persuade them like, oh, like give me your email. I'm going to send you some cool stuff. And now they're looking at those cool stuff. Yeah. I think that like, I, I see a lot and a lot of customers are successful when they do this, this one thing as the first email they send out. Um, they essentially copy a version of their quiz result page and send that as the first email, but with more information around that specific topic because that already has that particular persona or person hooked into what this result was and they want to know more information about that one thing. So when they add on to that thing, um, it's sort of more engaging to them, right? And so I've seen that that has really worked very well with for the, a lot of, of businesses out there. So kudos to, to you guys that have shared your experiences. Um, and so I think that's a that's a really great way to sort of segue your customers into wanting to and subscribe. That's one recommendation I have. Yeah, okay. I like that. And I would I would encourage you all to look at your email marketing stats separately from your quiz. So I mean, figure out what what's the goal here, right? To get subscribers, probably to get sales towards some offering. And so if you're if you're leading people in with the quiz, but you're not seeing enough people starting it or enough people subscribing, then an email stat is not what you should be worried about right now, because then you're spending all of your time on crafting these really specific messages, like Tamara says, which is awesome, but who's going to see them if nobody's coming through the quiz? So That's I would, point. you know, like figure out like what is when you, I think if you've been listening, you know, I'm not a numbers <laughs> person. I don't like reading. <laughs> I've got a lot of problems over here, but 
I would just say before diving in and getting overwhelmed with flow charts and stats and conversion rates and are you at the average conversion, right? Like mm-hmm. figure out what is it that you need to do and then move backwards. Where are people getting blocked? Are they not even getting into the funnel? Work on your quiz. Are they in the funnel but not converting to sales? Then work on your email sequences. Mm-hmm. So you're not um, doing too much. I'll- keep it simple. And that's a really good point. And so I just want to... I want to talk a little bit about the e-commerce e-commerce businesses out there. Like think about your conversion rates when it comes to like the products you're selling. Like um, you don't necessarily have to have like email follow-ups on, on that specific topic, but maybe you can, you know, send recommendations or, you know, different uh, collections that you have and, or things of that nature to sort of keep your audience interested. And the reason I say that is because for all of you listening out there, you guys know I love candles. And so I'm always, I'm always looking for the next scent or the new things that are out there that they're showcasing. Like right now, you know, summer to fall, what fall scents are going to be coming out that I may be interested in buying in a month or two, you know, look at those conversion. When I think about conversion rates for e-commerce, I think about always trying to keep up with the demand of your clients, right? And your audience, like, what do they want next? What are they looking for? Are you doing it based on seasons, products, um, things of that nature? Just try to, for the lack of a better term, keep up with the trends of the seasons, at least, or the trends of things that are going out there. If you're not specifically focusing on like email marketing or uh, something, a a different funnel that you have. So I just wanted to add on to that. Yeah. And Tamaris, that brings up like when I hear, okay, guys, we're going to talk about quiz conversion rates. I literally think of the analytics tab and that, that funnel, but what Tamaris is talking about is you can also look at analytics on the growth plan of who, how many people in your audience are answering questions a specific way. So that's where you get the information to send or target people with the right messaging. So like we know Damaris loves candles. I'm so glad you brought that up again. (laughs) So we want to make sure Damaris is aware of what's coming out. We want to keep her excited about what's coming. Maybe we want to involve her in the process as an existing customer versus somebody who has never purchased before, but is maybe, you know, randomly found your site because they're looking for a specific non-toxic pet friendly cleaning something candle, right? Like that could be the same product that Damaris is purchasing, but those are two very different customers at two very different points in the buyer journey that need to hear two very different messages in order to convert. So you don't just have to look at, hey, is my quiz converting at 30 to 40% because that's the average, but rather use it for market research too. What is your audience telling you? Do more of that thing. Right. Right. It's also a great way to kind of think about, well, what am I currently spending money on? And is it worth it to continue spending and investing money in that, you know, maybe product line or that course or, you know, mastermind and whatnot? Um, I would say what's interesting is – you know, like it's going to take a long time, not long, but like you have to let things run for some time in order to understand what these conversion rates are. How do you guys relate all of that? Like time, conversion, sales. I know I'm throwing numbers at you, Jackie, but you know what I mean? Like how, how do you recommend somebody take all of that information and kind of think about what decision to make off of it? I say slowly and bit by bit. If you are not even getting, let's say your quiz has been up for a week or two weeks and you've gotten 10 views on that quiz, don't worry about conversion sales from 10 people. Worry about getting more visibility to that quiz. Um, That's a big thing that would come up in coaching is, okay, these are sort of the stats that you're looking for. Like, right, like we can link in the show notes, the average conversion rate report. So you can see what those numbers look like for your industry. But Do you really need to look at those numbers if you don't even have enough people coming on to your website, right? Mm -hmm. Like 10 people. And again, this is could be very different for depending on what you're doing with your quiz, right? But let's say you have a goal of getting 100 people on your email list. 
10 people, five people looking at your quiz and answering your questions may be very skewed. Like these people are not your ideal customers. So why make changes off of what this very small base of people are saying? Instead, save your time, keep the quiz as you have it. You created it that way for a reason and give it more time to test out. Focus your energy and your efforts on marketing the quiz, adding it into blog posts, putting it into video show notes, um, displaying it on your website more prominently, adding it to pop-ups, partnering with people that can share your quiz, you know, things like that, because that is where your time will be best spent so that once you get more views, then you can move down the funnel. Okay, now that people are seeing the quiz, they're not clicking in to start it. Great, let's change the title. Let's work on the cover. Um, or maybe they're starting it, but then you're not getting those completions. That's when it's time to look at the questions. But when you think of all of these things that you should be looking at right from the get-go so that you're getting more sales, you're just going to get overwhelmed, probably if you love numbers or not, you know? just so much to think about all at once. So go slow, start at the top and work your way down and figure out where are the most people falling out. Probably if you're just starting, it could be the views. Don't change a thing in your funnel. Just work on promoting. Yeah. Quit. And definitely just to add on to what Jackie's saying, just test one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you will get, you will not know where, where you need to improve if you're not testing one thing at a time. Right. Um, I know it could be a slow process for businesses out there that just really want to go, go, go make money. But if you do one thing right the first time, you don't have to go back and continue and continue to try to fix what whatever gap or whatever, wherever your business is missing out, you know, um, an opportunity. So I know it might not be the answer that everybody wants, but just slow one thing at a time. I think that's the best advice we can give. And set the foundation is what I heard from you also saying, like, make sure that it's not something that you have to like completely scrap and redo all over again. Um, something came to mind when you were talking about like what you could do on the growth plan. And I want to bring up how you can look at the analytics for each specific result. And this kind of relates to kind of what we were just talking about in sort of figuring out like where to invest your time in, what um, to spend or not spend money on. This is like another place where you could do that, especially if your results have something to do with like what offer you're sending people to after they take your quiz or products, product line, et cetera. Um, so if you're on the growth plan and you go to that results tab, you'll be able to see guys add on if I miss something, but you should be able to see how many people got each of those results, um, how many people even clicked the call to action, how many people oh, – there's more, but why can't I think of what else is in there? Yeah, the questions, um, like how many people are answering the questions, the way that they're answering the questions. You'll even be able to see if they're dropping off at a specific question. Mm -hmm. Um, but specifically in the results tab, in the analytics, there's like – those are the two big ones you want to look at. Um, but that's another place where you could see like, okay, how many people are, are entering this segment of my email list? How many people, you know, am I, let's say your quiz is specifically for like filtering people out. Like how many people are in this bucket of filtering people out? And that could tell you, right? Like maybe I'm not targeting the right audience. Maybe like the wrong people keep finding my business um, if they're all ending up in this bucket and I want them to go somewhere else or I want them to do something else. My favorite example of this, shout out to Wendy Hodge, our friend from Australia. She was in the Quiz Collective community and she was getting a decent number of views and starts on her quiz, but like everybody was ending up in the same result bucket. So Wendy is a healthy habits coach. And I, th I think the quiz at the time was called How Healthy Are You or something like that. And everybody was getting these like super healthy results awesome that you're super healthy but Wendy was like where's all the unhealthy people at that I can help you know that that's like not really who I was targeting with this quiz and we realized it was because unhealthy people knew they were being they had unhealthy habits and they didn't need a quiz to tell them how unhealthy they were because that would probably just make them feel worse about themselves right and so we wouldn't necessarily have realized that that's what was happening if Wendy didn't give this quiz time to actually test it out and get people to take it and, and recognize, hey, everybody's ending up in the same result bucket. But then also we wouldn't have ever have had the conversation of, 
we need to change the quiz title because even though right we're getting people through the quiz and in, into a result we're not getting them into the into the right result the quiz that you're using right now is attracting the wrong people because you wanted less people to end up in the healthy bucket and more people to end up in the midway or the unhealthy right so that you can help them sell your offerings and work with them so that was a really neat thing to work through with her because like I said if you didn't give it the time you wouldn't necessarily have known that and how many new quizzes would Wendy have made about healthy topics when that's the exact opposite of the quiz that her ideal customer is looking for that's a really good point especially if your main topic would be to help people get healthy um right I also wonder like how many people lied <laughs> on that also quiz, true. you know, like just because mm -hmm. kind of like you said, like they don't want to say like, oh, I'm super unhealthy, but they yeah. were maybe curious about where this quiz was going to take them. Um, so that might be even a call to like not necessarily having to change the whole quiz, but maybe like changing the language around how they get to the bucket that she wants them to get into. Like I want to know if it's like, too much sugar. I want to know if it's too much salt or lack of exercise and things like that. Like switching the way you think about your quiz and using that data in order to do so. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Most of Wendy's leads prior to using a quiz were coming through or like most of her website traffic was coming through very specific blogs that had re healthy recipes on them. So we took that, okay, we know that these unhealthy people that you're looking to target are, are looking for healthy recipes and food. They're not necessarily, they are not thinking about changing habits. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's something that they need to do to develop a healthier lifestyle, but let's give them what they want. They want healthy recipes. So when she changed up her quiz, that's exactly what she led with. And then you get people that land into these different buckets of like, hey, go do this thing next. But based on questions that they're answering, Wendy can then target them and say, this is a very unhealthy habit or, hey, kudos to you for doing this. But what about that kind of thing? So it's not exactly the quiz didn't turn out exactly like she thought it would. It doesn't work in the same way that she thought it would, but it gives her the exact information that she needs because she was able to slowly tweak it over time to get it to tell her what she needs to know about her audience so she can make the right changes. I love that. I love that. Damaris, do you have anything to add to that? I have one last conversion rate I want to throw out. No, no. Um, so this came to mind in what we were just talking about, but also the idea of working backwards and using what automations already exist to create your quiz, but a conversion rate before you even create your quiz is look at how many people are already buying each of your products or your product lines. Look at how many people are, you know, going through each email in the current email sequence that you already have up because all of this can play a part in the creation of your quiz. If you end also can give you credibility to like support why people should take your quiz. Like um, imagine if you came upon, upon a quiz where they're like, you know, 70 people in the last month signed up for my program and transformed their lives. Take my quiz to figure out like what blah, blah, blah you are. That could absolutely help in sort of funneling more people into your course or program or into like your products. Um, and, you know, then you can go into looking like, okay, well, what conversion rates do I need to look at for my quiz? Yep. I agree. Love it. I think, I mean, Jess, that could be a whole nother episode. I love the opt-in <laughs> episode and I love this. Use your existing workflows episode mm -hmm. too because then that – I mean, coming from coaching, when you're thinking, okay, think large about your com your business, right? Like, what do you, what is it that you want these people to do? And now let's make a quiz off of that. And then once you make the quiz, let's get into what do these people need to hear after the quiz and build out email sequences. And I often found that that's where people would sort of like fall off the quiz wagon of this is so much work. I just made the whole quiz. Now I have to write all these emails. Mm -hmm. What if the quiz doesn't convert? Why did I spend time on these emails? So I really, really like this concept. And we just did a blog uh, in partnership with MailChimp mm -hmm. on using existing workflows and working backwards. So what are the questions that you want to ask in your quiz that tell you, okay, this person is going to need this recommendation versus that one. This right. person is a good fit for your course versus, hey, they're not. 
If you're already selling your course and you already have emails to your course, just put people that are qualified for your course into that funnel. It's a great way to repurpose your content and work that you've already done without having to do so much more work. Right. Like look at what's already working. Yeah. And and just optimize it. Totally. Maybe we'll do that next week. I love it. (laughs) Love it. Love that idea. So everybody be ready. Um, but thank you everyone for joining us for those who are listening. Um, I feel like there are so many other conversion rates we could probably cover and we have a ton of content on how to know if your quiz is doing well. Um, on our blog, we also have that episode that will link to this one in the show notes so that you guys could have easy access to it. But, um, I think that's all I got for today. Unless you guys have anything last to add. No, we'll see you next week. Yeah, any questions you have on opt-in rates? Like what conversion rate are you trying to achieve? What are you looking for? Let us know and we can try to answer it. Because I guess, yeah, now I'm like nerding out on numbers. Who am I? (laughs) The one who said she doesn't like numbers throughout so many numbers in this episode, I can't even deal. Um, But listen, that means kudos to Interact because the analytics in Interact are honestly so easy mm -hmm. to read. Like if I can do it, I promise you, you can do it. We do also have content on like what analytics you get on each plan. It's not to say that like you have to be on the growth plan to get all these numbers and figure out all this stuff. You can very well like use the light plan at the stage you're at, like figure out what you need to figure out in terms of like how effective is my quiz funnel? How effective is it at getting people where I want them to go and and purchasing from me? Um, check those out. We could also try to find the links to those so that way you can. And then if that's something you guys want to know, we could also cover that in an episode too. Totally. All right, guys. Well, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye everyone.